All right, we should be live. Hi, everybody. It looks like we've got three people watching with us right now. If you're in the chat and you want to say hello, say hello. Today's episode is featuring Gianna, little white man. She is showing us how she does her traditional beading, how she makes her jewelry and everything. And we also have Heather and Cindy again with us. And uh, we're working on our little things, or maybe we're just hanging out, chatting and, and talking. But uh, we'll get started. And I don't see anybody talking in the chat. Just Oh, there's Vicki and Perla. Hello. So we do have a couple of people. Everyone, Looks like a couple more people are joining us. Quiet. I know. <laughs> Hi, guys. Yep. Yeah. And we're gonna, I'm going to put it over on... Let's see. I forgot to play with it for a second. Hello, Raven. Always forgetting how to show somebody. I think the way we do it. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> go down to my. Oh, I gotta click that box. So there you go. go. <laughs> I keep forgetting about that little box in the corner. All right. So we have Gianna in front, and she can show us what she is gonna work on for us. Mike Bone, you know. Um, what I'm saying is hello, everybody, in my native tongue. But I'm going to be doing a little pair of earrings that are just like this. They almost look like a little arrow. Um, a lot of us that do uh, powwows, we carry our own beads with us in case our beadwork break. And we do simple little jewelry like this, especially if we're competing or we have a family member competing. We have to make sure we have that with us to either repair or just to make a fresh pair of earrings that these are just a simple little traditional earring. These are kind of off, off on one side. If you can look at them, they're off on one side right here, but I'm not gonna make that mistake with these. I just threw these together real quick to give you an example of what I'm going to do. Um, uh, I started beating at the age of five. It was something that uh, my mother thought that I needed to learn because I was a very impatient child and very inquisitive. And it was her way of shutting me up and teaching me how to be still. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was my great grandmother teaching me how to make biscuits. She'd have me in the kitchen working with her to keep me still and keep an eye on me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you know, we are, we as parents, we all, we all find a way to teach our, teach our children how to um, be patient. Sometimes they, they teach it or learn it and as we're teaching, and sometimes they don't because I do have one that's still very impatient. <laughs> but um, what you're going to need is just a small piece of pylon. And, and is that like a thick fabric that's made out of maybe kind of feels like felt or something? Yeah, it's kind of like felt. It feels feels like and it's, it's stiff as you can see it's stiff you you always want something stiff to beat on so that way um when you're pulling and tugging your fabric don't bend mm -hmm. okay um and you're going to what i'm going to use is a little bit of rhinestone banding pretty and i and you choose four colors so i just chose the traditional colors which is as everybody knows that I've told you is the compass colors. And those are very traditional colors among our native people. I'm using a size 11 beading needle and they are the James John or John James, I think it's John James, um, size 11 um, sharps. Sharps means they're small, they're short. Okay. When you see sharps, it's short. When you see beading on the package, it's the long needles. I do have some beading needles, but I didn't have whatever the string is or the, the thread that you use. I didn't have that because I wanted to try to do, do this too, but I didn't have the materials. Well, you can use any type of thread, to be honest. You know, whatever you have. I've been known to use um, sewing thread when I'm out there repairing jewelry for, you know, nieces and nephews and even my own children when they compete. And this is... Um, uh, the Nymo, everybody has seen me use it on my channel, Nymo, and you see where it says Nymo in there, and right there where you see the alphabet, that's the size of the thread. Um, the lower, uh, I, I guess you could say, the higher the number, which is like A, A is a higher number in the Nymo thread, um, 
is the thicker and it goes from it goes a h a d h um and o so you get four different and o is the thinnest smallest piece of thread that you get from the nymo thread and it is actually what a lot of native americans use is the nymo nylon thread um i use i got a u a ruler so that way i can measure mm -hmm. measure what i'm going to cut and be able to show you how long and wide the pieces and of course a pair of scissors um, cool. <laughs> uh, they're you. nicer than mine <laughs> Well, they're the those name brand ones. I don't know if you can see. And they have a little sleeve. So yeah, mine doesn't have a little sleeve or anything. <laughs> and I believe I got this one at Michaels. Are those Fiskers? Yeah, yeah, I got them at Michaels. You're going to need. Oh, yeah. You're also going to need a pair, you know, as earring hooks. So let me get those out. I forgot to pull those out. I had them all packaged, and I just didn't take those out. A pair of earring hooks. Doesn't matter whether they're 925, silver tone, gold tone, whatever, as long mm -hmm. as they work. <laughs> and then, of course, one of these. So, uh, can I get the fabric that you're going to use to bead with? Can I get that at like Hobby Lobby, Michaels, that kind of thing? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can even get it at Walmart. Okay. So, yeah. I'm going to be able to go back, and I love being able to go back and watch the videos again. So, when I have the materials, I can try it. Okay, so the first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to take take my ruler and measure it, measure my pellon. I've got to measure my pellon because um, if I don't, I won't be able to know where my center is. So as you can see, this thing is about two inches. Mm -hmm. So one inch is going to be my center mark. Always center your piece because um, if not, you know, you're... You yourself may get confused unless you're um, a well-established beater and you know what you're doing. So don't ever forget to have that ruler out there. And um, the size, the size of rhinestone I'm using is um, like I think it's like a six SS is what it's called, and they're very tiny. You guys, if you know, anybody has gotten my beadwork, you'll see that I use some very tiny rhinestone banding. Um, and that comes on like maybe a roll or something. Well, yeah, it comes in a row, but um, I get mine out of China, and um, because they have some really nice rhinestones. Yes, China, they really do, and they're they're crystal, actually crystal rhinestones. But I also got a different type of rhinestone, and don't ever be afraid to buy it. Let me pull some out. Yeah, I was going to say, don't be afraid when it comes to rhinestones and stuff and beads to get them from places like India and China because they are the main hubs for cutting stones mm -hmm. and, and things like that. So that's where they're going to come from anyway. Even if the seller is in the United States, they probably ordered them from there anyway. But, you and know, I, with other products, you're kind of worried about buying stuff. I get the plastic rhinestone or crystal rhinestone banding as well mm -hmm. out of China. I get them in colors because, you know, not every everybody wants to wear the metal cup chain. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's a lot easier when you got people who are allergic to metals to use this. Right. I've got them in all sorts of colors. And I've never showed them on my on my uh, on my own channel so you got a treat there april <laughs> oh, thank you <laughs> but yeah i've got him in all colors so let me get started here of course i take with any pair of earrings a wingspan and if you remember a wingspan is from fingertip from one side of your hand's fingertip to the other hand fingertip that is a complete wingspan mm -hmm. or double wingspan i forgot to say it that way a wingspan is from your chest to your fingertip. Um, okay, I have to do. And we're this. talking center of chest. In the center of your chest, yes, right between your bosom. Mm -hmm. uh, I approximate a yard from my nose to my fingertips. Yeah, that does too. It does. That was something I got from my grandma. They say with your waist size, you can put. Your fingertip to your elbow is supposed to be the same as your waist. 
<laughs> I wish. I know that, that that doesn't seem right, but they say it measures out that way. I've never like attempted it to see if that was true, but. And with these earrings, I do not, I do not use um, any of my beeswax because this is how we are out there in the powwow grounds. Anytime our jewelry makes or breaks, we don't always have everything we need. So, and these little earrings, they can last a long time because you're not putting a lot of heavy work into them. You're not putting edging on them. You're just basically throwing them together and they're fun to make. They are actually fun to make. They're something that um, I've, I've taught um, in the church groups and stuff to the little girls whenever they come in after, you know, for their little church programs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I've been asked to do teach some beading in there. Um, even after school programs, I, I've done this with them, taught them how to make it. I mean, I really like to work with children. Um, I actually do have an associates from kindergarten to sixth grade. So I figured, I figured I, you know, better not waste that, even if it is just teaching how to do this, you know, a little bit of beadwork with the children. Yeah. And I don't care whose child it is. I mean, you could be red, yellow, black, or white. I'll teach you how to bead because I think everybody has a special talent within themselves. The arts and the music, you know, these days is not so prevalent in school. And I think it is important that kids learn that. It's very important. It is. It is. I've heard and, you know, it also teaches the child that can't sit still in school that they, they can find something to do to make, you know, to have a lot of fun with. And I've heard that when they teach things, music and art to kids, that it actually does benefit uh, with learning other subjects. Right. Yep, it does. They say that kids that can read music, their IQ is higher. Yes. Yes, I've heard that, too. I'm glad that I can read My music. Kids so far. My parents made me do piano lessons when I was younger, so. <laughs> My two older ones have been in band since they started um, high school, middle school, high school. And so my youngest one, once he comes out of uh, the elementary school, you know, I think he'll probably also want to participate in band. Something that was important to me when I was in school. I what loved, did you play? I played the alto saxophone. Cool. I played the bass saxophone. My so, daughter yeah. plays alto and the bass saxophone. And my son, he's very talented. He can play pretty much any instrument you put in front of him. <laughs> wow. But the first thing you're going to do is you're going to lay the rhinestone down on your on your pelon. Okay. And your centerpiece, you're going to end up working on one side and then the other. And you're only going to lay like four rows. So, you know, and the way we lay the rows is so quick, so fast, and you got the dancer back out there within minutes. Hi, Marge West. Thanks for joining us. I see oh, that nice. you're, you're new to my channel. She's from Jones. Okay, awesome. Hey, Marge. And if you don't mind, if I get these done before the end of the program, April, can mm -hmm. I do a giveaway to give these away to somebody? If you would love that. Yeah, we love to do that. We always love to participate in giveaways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was lucky and I won last week, guys. I'm going to put it on me for just a second so I can show you. I just got it in the mail right before we started. This is the necklace that I won from Kathleen. Oh, and she ended up making me a beautiful chain for it and everything. So thank you, Kathleen. She's here in the chat today. Hi, it's Patsy. Gorgeous. So gorgeous. Hi, Patricia. And Sandra Conco is here, too. She just joined in a little while ago. Hey, Sandra. Hey, Patsy Crafty. If anybody missed uh, last week's uh, edition of Craft With Me, we had Kathleen Crafts on, and she does wire working, really beautiful wire working. And this is her Tree of Life pendants that she makes. She does amazing wire working. And so, her scrapbook. Yeah, that was cool, too. That was an added bonus to see that. <laughs> uh -oh. A woman of many talents. 
And if you watch her video, I added her link to her channel just as well as I added Gianna's below this video so that y'all can go check out their channels. Cindy, what are you working on today? You, did you find something for you to do or you just hanging out? Yeah, I've already finished them. <laughs> <laughs> I made another pair of earrings. We're so addicted. We sat there at night talking on uh, the phone and uh, making jewelry together. <laughs> oh. I've been getting more and more tools in. That's what I was going to do today. Um, at some point, I'm going to show y'all some of the things that I've received. Like I ordered a, um, a Dremel tool for like buffing my silver and um, you know, sometimes you find pendants that have already been engraved with somebody's name or something. So I wanted to be able to buff that out and make it available for somebody that wanted to purchase it and have it, you know, with their name put on it. Um, I'm going to start with the uh, hammering stuff. So I got in uh, the steel block that I'll need for hammering metal. Um, some more copper wire just came in today, too, in different thicknesses. For me to work with okay what i'm doing is i'm going to be adding four of each of the colors that i have chosen onto the thread and the way we tack it down is what we call the lazy tack because we're not going to be going like like right away through every every two or every three because that'll that really takes a long time Mm -hmm. And so we always start with the from the center and work outwards for the beading. Yes, yes. Always start from the center and work outward. Oh boy, that was crazy. My beads all just fell right off. Not done that before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it's because I forgot to put the knot in the end. Marge was asking if you want, would, um, I guess, maybe tilt the camera down to show how you're doing, doing everything. Okay. I and that's up to that. you, but she was asking if you could. Yeah, I can do that. I actually have my camera set, so that way I can do that. Okay. There we go. You see my little mess going on here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that pad there, that that um, this here, a little this towel here or something. Is, this here is um, you know those little um, towel, <coughs> oh, excuse me, towel like things that you could put underneath your drying racks or whatever has mm -hmm. a little sponge in it and all that. That's, That's what it is. To keep um, the beads from rolling around and yeah, all that. Keep the beads from rolling around. Nice. And what I'm doing is I'm coming up, I'll be coming up on this side of the, the rhinestone. So you started from the back side and do you go in between the rhinestones kind of back and yes. forth or? Back and forth. You go in between the rhinestone back and forth because it is the best way to lay it down. Some people will glue it mm -hmm. and that's fine. And that's fine if you glue it down, but as long as you get your rhinestone down. But um, when you're dancing, you don't have time to wait for the glue to wait dry. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> so you put on how many of the black, red, yellow, and white for each? Four one? of each color. Okay. Four of each color. And then right in front of your bottom white bead, you'll take your bead down or your needle down in front of that bead. Mm-hmm. And. You'll come up on the side in between the in between the yellow and the white, mm -hmm. tacking down four beads at a time. That's what we call tacking down. Okay, and so it comes across, and does that? And you bring that, your, bring is that like three thread. rhinestones. You'll bring your thread in between the white and the yellow, and in between the beads and the rhinestones. You'll you'll oh, take your okay. needle down. And pull, and this also gives it kind of the um, traditional um, old-fashioned beadwork look because um, we have a stitch called the lazy stitch. 
that we use on our on our buckskin because buckskin is really thick and hard to take your needle all the way through. So we found a technique to be able to lay our beads down um, a little more easier. Would you use a different needle than that one for the buckskin? We, we use the same needle we have. We use the same needle we have, but instead of going all taking your needle all the way through like that, we take a pretty good portion of the surface and like pick and it take our it. take our needle through it like this. All and right. We do our rows going up and down that way. And then so this is just it. working between the uh, the beads there, not the rhinestones. You're not like attaching it across the rhinestones. No, yet. you do not. You do not put it across the rhinestones. Just tacking your beads down. When you're ready to do your next row, you'll come up beside the second bead. Your second, like mine, is a second black bead. Bring your thread back up. Because, like I said, you're gonna give it like the arrow. Give it a look like an arrow. Some people don't even bother to do the arrow. And just cut it off and make it into a chevron. Mm -hmm. but I love an arrow. I think a lot of people love a native arrow. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I have a question, and and you may have said it, and I may have missed it. Uh, what exactly is the purpose of the rhinestones? The rhinestone is to give it some bling. That's it. Okay. Just give it a little bling. Everybody likes a little bit of bling. Especially when you're a dancer, we we like our well. Our if when you're jewelry. moving, it will flash. So, mm -hmm. <coughs> so as you can see, my my next row is dropping down. Okay, like two beads down, or yeah, you come, you bring your needle up next to your second bead from the top. I think this will be something my daughter will like to try with me. It is. It's a lot of fun. As you can see, I'm already halfway done with one side. So I may get to get the full pair done in this whole video. Is this something I could also do onto fabric with that behind the fabric? If I wanted yeah. it on, like, say, a pillow or something? Yes, you can. Okay. Cool. And this is actually called bead embroidery. So, you know, anybody that embroiders, you know, they could have a fun time with beads. Because I embroider. <laughs> mm -hmm. I do. I love to embroider. Okay. Let me tell you. When are you offering those Pendleton blankets? Because I know you mentioned that in a video recently that I caught. And uh -huh. I'm interested in getting one. I've only got one left and it's in a forest green. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm asking 30 for it. Okay. Will you be getting any more? I'm looking for more of the blue kind of color because I'm going to be using it in my bus conversion. I want to do maybe, um, you know, to have that as a throw blanket on my couch area. Um, I'm waiting for some more to come in. They told me that they're actually waiting for their order to come in and I'm like well I want to know your source so I don't have to go through <laughs> right just skip the middleman <laughs> that's all right but yeah I have time to wait you know whenever you do get some in but I'm looking for the blues and stuff I'll have to send you a picture of some of the things that I've been buying as far as decor so maybe we can find one that'll kind of go with it I did a pair of these in um in like purples and light purples for my daughter and she just fell in love with them. Oh yeah. I like purple. But I am getting some little kits together. Um since I learned how to make my epoxy um focals. Mm -hmm. Or cabochons or whatever they're called. Um I, I'm putting some little kits together and I'll be offering those for $10 a piece. Oh, well, I'm getting one of those. <laughs> people will, um, you know, when I come on, 
they can sit and bead and you know have a good time with me as well yep that would be so much fun it's doing the little coming down part i guess what they call it the graduating effect mm -hmm. see how the beads are graduating down and it's like i said these are fairly easy really really simple just quick and you'll have how many rows on that side and how many on the other side? It'll be four and four, four mm -hmm. on each side. Gianna, you said you're using uh, a needle that's called the sharps. Uh-huh. Uh, so is that technically, is it a beading needle or is it a? It's a beading needle. <laughs> Excuse me. Because I know, like, there my mom's go. little quilting needles are called sharps, too. So, there we go. Look there at this green. Done. There we go. Now, these are some very sturdy beading needles. Um, even the long ones, you know, how your long needles will bend. It takes a while for the John James brand to bend. Okay. I'll look through here and see what it is that I have. I know I have some. I bought some at Hobby Lobby. I also have some of uh, these are called these are vintage actually, I think a little older for home sewing and repair. So these are for like upholstery there. Are but the other cool? brand that I use is Tulip brand. I don't know if anybody's heard of the Tulip brand beading needle. These are called Sewology. I'll put this all back up for a second. I'll show these. Um, what happened? There we go. So these are called Sewology. These come from um, uh, uh, Hobby Lobby. And these... They say they range from size 10 to 13 mm -hmm. on that pack. But they had other packs there. And then these are doll needles. I got these because I want to try to make my own teddy bears eventually. Oh, I love to make teddy bears. I learned how to make them in seventh grade when when we took home ec in, in school. And um, we had a choice to make, um, remember back in the 80s when we used to have those cool little jumpers that you could run around and wear, and, I mean, just zip up in the front or whatever, you know, and wear a belt around it. We had a choice to make that, or teddy bears. And mm -hmm. I was like, well, you know what? I already know how to make a jumper because, you know, my mother taught me a lot. Um, I was like, I want to learn how to make toys. So I chose to do the teddy bear brought it home and my sister, my younger sister, she fell in love with it and gave me the worst time ever until I coughed it up because the little arms moved, the legs moved. And I put, I, I can't remember the name of the wire that I could, um, you know, bend the arms. So that way it looked like it was hugging me or, you know, it, it was pretty neat. And my teacher, she was like, my home ec teacher, she was like, well, Gianna, and I had it done within no time. She says, well, it looks like you might end up earning extra credit because you can go over there and help her and her and her. <laughs> right. I yeah, we had I had to come back as well. And I made like a pillow and a pair of boxer shorts. <laughs> That's what I ended up making. I know y'all okay, as you can see I'm coming up on the second side now. But I did not take home at Oh boy, I didn't see that. The teacher told me I was not domestically inclined. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a couple of students in our class that was told that too. Was, and I thought the teacher was being rude. And she says, No, I'm here to teach you young ladies to be prepared for life. Mm -hmm. And you take shop class, Cindy. <laughs> I did take shop. <laughs> I knew it. She told me she can fix stuff. She's handy. <laughs> I did. I took shop. Took just one year of it. So, but the funny thing is, I sew and I know how to quilt and I know how to. 
I can cook anything you want me to cook. <laughs> and there I you know go. I can. So, Jeep but my mom, my mom is an, uh, a, a master quilter and an accomplished seamstress. She didn't teach me how to sew. She taught, she sent me to the other seamstress in town to teach me how to sew. So, <laughs> I was in 4-H and everything, but she just, I think the thing was, she went too slow for me, and, and that y'all were talking about reading music, I played the piano, but I can't read music, so I just play by ear, and so yeah. I, took, I took some piano lessons, and I know enough to read music to tell you what key something is in, you know, I know the F-A-C-E and the every good boy does fine kind of thing, but, uh, but uh, uh, it it didn't move fast enough for me in lessons. I, I want to learn how to play the boogie woogie right now. So, <laughs> right. oh yeah, I can play the piano. I I can hear it and play it, but I might not tell you what key I'm. Well, I can tell you what key I'm playing in the end. So anyway, but this new stuff, this new uh, praise and worship music that we play at church. The thing that bugs me about it is I have trouble with timing. So that that's I never did like the metronome. So anyway. okay, I'm doing I've done something here that um, everybody has heard me talk about. And these you can you it's hard to make a mistake with these, but um, as natives believe, we're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. So I've deliberately put already put my mistake in there, and it's right here. I've put three red beads, but I've made it to where it all still lines up with the mm -hmm. with that row. Okay. So, yeah, we do not our beadwork. We always if if we know it's something that you're not you're gonna make a mistake with or whatever, we deliberately put our mistakes in there. Awesome. And now the other Cindy, she's been looking for her mistake on the beadwork or the earrings that I made that she bought from me. She says, I just can't find it. I go, the harder you look, the more you're not going to find it. I go, just one day, take a glance and you may find it. <laughs> How did you know that I'm looking at a pair of your earrings that you made right now? <laughs> <laughs> so do you have some that she made for you? And uh, yeah, Dwayne got some along the way. And um, here it oh, is. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Did you make that cabochon in the middle? No, I didn't. I bought those from a good friend of mine who, who uh, was going to teach me how to make them. But when my sister-in-law got here, she beat me to beat her to it. So, you know, it's not too bad. So fun. Hi, Dwayne. Hi, Dwayne. Hi, I'm, Dwayne. I'm looking for the uh, the on purpose mistake here. <laughs> it's in there. Oh, that'll drive Heather crazy. She'll be she'll be going crazy trying to find that mistake. Hi, Ann. See. I don't think there is one. There is. It's in there. <laughs> I'm going to pop back up a little bit bigger and show this necklace that I won last time because a couple of people mentioned they did. I guess they didn't catch it when I showed it earlier. That is very, very good. So I don't. <laughs> Hi, Andor. Hi, Andor. Uh, did you find it? I, I think we're just going to have to take her word for it because I don't <laughs> see it. <laughs> oh. I know it's driving Cindy crazy too. Cindy <laughs> McGarry's going nuts. She can't find it. <laughs> you know, I um, I have an aunt. It's uh, um, on my dad's side. All the brothers are gone and now one of the wives is gone, but uh, there's one that just the kindest woman and never heard her say a negative word about anyone and and so i've always just kind of considered her as someone that i've never found any flaws in her so perhaps that's what these earrings 
<laughs> Just remember, really nothing is actually flawless ever. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my dentist reminds me that every time I go get my teeth cleaned. Uh, well, what a bad dentist. He's not supposed to tell you that about your teeth. Oh, no, no. It's because um, I just was at the dentist yesterday. I always get told, uh, you take such good care of your teeth and gums. Oh, you have cavities. <laughs> so, uh, and then, of course, Dwayne's never had a cavity. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Oops, there goes the chair. <laughs> sure, April. <laughs> it is. The handles release and then the layback mode kicked in. I went up there to get this bell. When we went to Cherokee and we went to the Indian Museum. Oh, that's beautiful. Everything. This is what I bought. This is authentically made. It's not one of those gift shop pieces, but are these the fire colors that you're? Those are the fire colors. They're done in I a love, fire color. It's, it's, a, it's a belt that has the, I guess that's like the. That's the tie. That's where you what you tie it with around your waist. That's beautiful. Is it um, deer skin you said or? It could be elk hide. It looks really elk. thick. It looks more like elk hide. Yeah, it's pretty thick. Yeah, that's yeah, I, I can put that on with like a dress and tie it around. I love it. So I have all of my, I know it's not politically correct, and I'm sorry. All of my beads, I call them my Indian beads, but I have those. Oh, those are pretty. Can you believe that it's the Czech women who taught the Native Americans how to loom bead? Really? Mm -hmm. I think all of all that I have is loomed. But uh, uh, but one of them, I'm trying to get to this red one here. This no, this red one, it needs it needs repaired. It hasn't been repaired. Um, Susan Gill repaired one for me. And uh, when she sent it back to me, it she done the one that she done was a, a one that has the the little doll on it. Are they called kachina dolls? Is that what they're called, kachina dolls? Yeah, they can be called kachina dolls, or they could just be called representation of little humans. So <laughs> she gave me this one. She repaired this this one for me. It was in sad disrepair when I pulled it out of a lot and she repaired it. And I can't tell where she repaired it, but she done a really good job. So now, and I think she repaired maybe this one too for me because there were several of them. And I don't sell these. Now, I don't know that this is native. I just know that the beads are done the same way. It yeah. could be native. Um, but it looks kind of like a like a Lakota design because it's almost like patchwork. Yeah. And that's kind of why I liked it because uh, my mom is a quilter and uh, I love quilts. So anyway, but I, they, these all just hang on my bulletin board for me to look at. So when I die, my family is going to have quite the mess to clean up of all my things that I like to just look at. <laughs> Well. That's what I say. <laughs> I'm like, because my daughters, they really don't bead. Um, and I'm like, I don't know what they're going to do with all these beads when I'm gone. <laughs> now, did anybody time how long it took me to put that together? Um, I'm going to say, let's see, we oh. started at a little after three, maybe like, what, 20 minutes? Probably, yeah. So when Cindy started pulling those out, I have some that I've had for a while too. And then I found some as I was um, thrifting. So this one, this is one of those, I guess what they call them, the medicine bags. And this one was my mom's. She That's had a pouch. This. There's a difference between a pouch and a bag. Okay, so is this one the same thing or is it different? Because this one's mine. This one was my mom's. Your right hand is an actual pouch. 
And the other one is a bag, yes. Okay. So she always had this one, and I, I kept that, and she had some of, we used to get um, the little necklaces and beads when I was younger, like what Cindy was showing. So I have some of the little doll ones, but I've also found pieces along the way. So like I found this one, <clears throat> it was a little bit smaller. That one came out of like a jewelry jar. And that's called a rosette style. This one? Okay. Yeah, that's rosette. Cool. Is this that's, different than that? Or? That's rosette style as well. Anything that's done circular, um, we consider that a rosette style. Okay. And then this one, I guess, was attached to this. That was the chain. So, see, I do have some that needs to be repaired, too. Oh, my. You know what? That I one's just on a stretch. Those are cute. This one is, like, really long, and it has, like, two, uh, like, tie pieces there. And I don't know if it was meant to be a necklace or if it was a wrap-type bracelet. It actually looks like it might be a hat band. Oh, like around here? Oh, yeah. yeah. Let me tie it on. <laughs> I didn't think about that. The headband or a hat band. That is cool. I'm going to leave it on for a minute. I like it. <laughs> this one was my mom's. You can see how old this one is because it's it needs to be repaired. Because little body is coming apart from the rest of it. This one is a type of bracelet. I found lots of things that I can keep. This one may have been just, yeah, that's just some beads I probably put in there. Here's one. It also needs to be repaired. A lot of them needed to be repaired. Ooh, this one's neat. Has another one of the little eagles, I guess. And it's actually a pouch. It has a little thing where you can put something down inside of it and it needs the part reattached this one was mine since I was a young young little girl I had it in my jewelry box all this time it has damage too right there because I did used to wear it a lot and this one I think belonged to my grandmother because she had one in her jewelry box too I like how the wider ones like this. Ooh, I like the eagle on that. Can you believe they use it on a whole, they do that thing on one whole loom? On, yeah, I have seen it. Seen it. Sitting here. I've got my loom sitting here and I've got it strung already. I've got it strung already. And this, this can go out to 40 inches, this loom. Yeah, I had seen them doing that in the museum. They had someone up front doing the the, the loom work and the beading that way. I we could watch him as he did it. Uh, so that's in that pouch is a bunch of beaded pieces that were either mine, my mother's, or my grandmother's, or I found. And then over in the red pouch... <clears throat> Don't, don't. Or I keep like little things like stone. <laughs> you got sent to the corner already, Dwayne. <laughs> <laughs> so they say that you can put things in here, you know, that means something, I guess, to you or. Yeah, you can. Something that's very, you know, that really means that's precious to you. Um, you can make smaller ones. Um and you can put like lavender, sage, and all that in there just so you can walk around with a calming smell around you. Right. And I want to do that. I want to put like different little herbs and things in there. But next, so far, um, this was a piece of uh, amethyst that we found while we were up there in the mountains. So I put that in there. This is a little agate bear. I put that in my pouch. I think this might be a cat's eye, or, I mean, a tiger's eye or some type of stone that's very similar to that. Kind of rough, tumbled. It's in there. This was the arrowhead that I found in my backyard here. I have it in there. 
this one i believe it's an arrowhead but i'm not positive i can tell that one is but not sure if this one was or not or a spearhead or something they're usually bigger this one i was told is like one of the tools that they would use to maybe cut leather or do something with but it has the thumb indention right there where they would hold it it actually looks like something that we use whenever we scrape the hair off the off our hides when we were getting ready to tan it or make right. raw hide for moccasin soles and stuff right so that that's what i keep that one for I've had that one for many many years this came from my uncle and I believe it's to be a real piece of turquoise. My great uncle, my grandmother's brother, he made jewelry. He did like, you know, metal work type jewelry and things with rough tumbled type stones and stuff like that. He was a bit of an artist. He had actually went to school um, for art and he made pieces and gave it to members of my family. And then this is like a little Jade Buddha. I have it in there too. <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> so these are the little random things that I keep in that pouch. These are a few of my favorite things. Right. <laughs> and another <laughs> little smooth stone. I forgot about this one. My son picked it up somewhere and gave it to me. And I have some moccasins too. That was another thing that I bought with the belt. I bought some, some real moccasins. And yeah, I'm too scared to wear them out. I'm not showing everybody, but when I go to make the moccasins, they're just going to be like a pair of baby moccasins because they, the big ones are going to take like forever to do. You could take that could take up to days, but a pair of baby moccasins, I could easily just put something, some small little design on it and everything, and just put them together, and everybody will know how to at least make baby moccasins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I found a pair in, um, they were out of a storage unit, baby moccasins, really cute. I gave them to my sister. She um, likes Southwestern stuff. She's down in Southern Utah. Oh, nice. What part of Southern Utah? St. George. St. George, okay. I yeah. used to live in Southern Utah, the down around Monticello. Okay. Utah's Four Corners area. Um, <laughs> It's not the actual Four Corners area. What did they What did they call it? Um, oh shoot, darn it! But everybody that lives down there, they they called it like the place where you sell your soul to the devil. <laughs> that oh. Four Corners area. Okay. Yeah, the crossroads. Yeah. Ah, the, yeah. They it's call very it the crossroads. interesting that you brought that up because I was just reading about the Four Corners yesterday, learning about it. <laughs> So why do they say that about that area? They, um, from what I read, there's a lot of energy there that um, is, you know, symbolic in different ways to different tribes. Yeah, um, because down there you've got the Utes, you've got Navajos, you've got Apaches, you've got Pueblos, you've got Pimas. I mean, you got um, you know all those different tribes down in that area. So it's quite a quite a melting pot. <laughs> right. I also read that there is an increased amount of methane natural, you know, down there, which is I don't know, which is kind of interesting. But I, I okay. loved living down there because, you know, Monticello is like about maybe uh, 20 miles from Moab and all that stuff. And they have they have all those beautiful arches down in there and they've got a lot of petroglyphs and everything. And it is just a very beautiful place to live. You know, and I know exactly what you're talking about, but I have never been down there. I Dwayne, take her down there. It uh, is pretty. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think Dwayne's been down there, but I never have. And my sister, she wants me to go visit her in St. George because um, she hasn't been there for real long. Are there any other trading posts and things there where you can purchase native items? There in are. 
in St. George? <clears throat> At that crossroads area that y'all oh, There are, you'll find those in Moab though. Okay. That'll be on my to-do list to travel to. <laughs> Moab is our, one of our, one of Utah's state capital uh, for um, people to go visit. Uh, it's oh. not the state capital, but that's where everybody likes to go visit. Just don't go along the Green River. They have a habit of having their new sunbathers out there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't tell her that. She'll drive right. Are, are you sure I shouldn't go? <laughs> So, okay, so uh, I don't have any seed beads. Mm -hmm. These were the smallest beads I had, but I wanted to see if I could uh, bead and sew it in. So I just and I just sewed this onto a piece of fabric. So mm -hmm. I actually enjoy that very much. I think if I had seed beads, I could really get into this. It doesn't matter what kind of beads you have to do these. <coughs> Your camera is not wanting to focus. Yeah, you're, you're, it's just a little blurry. Like, you know how when your internet's getting a little choppy. Let's see if it'll do that. I think Cindy has the drunk camera. She does. <laughs> you focus that time? Yeah, now, yeah, now we can see it a little bit better. And yes. I just really kind of done it in a circle is all I've done. Okay, cool. And those that's just threading it all and kind of interlocking it together or yeah, is it just packing? Okay. That can make a ring, you know, you can do things like that and then probably attach it to wire or something. Yeah, she, and she said when she said it's like embroidery, it just kind of like, okay, I know how to embroidery, so back mm -hmm. stitch through it and back stitch through it and all that. So, anyway, so I think I can watch some more of this and learn how to do this so this is fun okay you want me to show the earrings that i made because sure. somebody asked to see those yeah we'll pull that those back up made today oh those are cute they're shell and then a b and it's on the gold so super cute how about design these are the ones that I made last night. I had already, I'd already come up with the design. I made two pairs like them last night. These ones here, I decided to keep for me. So anyway, but yeah. So I've, I've done those while we were talking early. So. And the cool part is, is that like those were like parts of a necklace. So if you have a, a necklace that has like repetitive parts like that, you can make multiple earrings or something like that. Oh, so you can turn one piece of jewelry into like three or four pieces of jewelry. And that's what we've been doing. What is she? Okay, Jude, why are you seriously Cindy in me? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was earlier, wasn't it? Did you scroll back for that? That was when you were saying that you took to y'all instead of home. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think she oh, said that's probably that. probably when they said that, that I was not domestically inclined. Yeah. That was seriously me. Right. I so, and I, I still had rather read a book or play with jewelry or do anything than keep house. I cleaned house this week, though. So, it was the first time in a month or we so. We are proud of you. I know. <laughs> I even said my people were proud. Holy cow. If I cooked, everyone would fall over bed. <laughs> from your food or just from shock? <laughs> yes. Yes. You notice she just said yes. Not yes to which one, but yes. <laughs> uh, oh, I was, let's see. I was thinking about making, um, some French toast because we have too much bread and oh okay we had a um, bunch of tortillas that needed to be baked you know the kind from Costco mm -hmm. and, yeah and you put them in the pan I cook I, I cooked the tortillas meaning you know pull them out of the package and put them in a warm pan see there you go 
<laughs> Heather makes a mean glass of water. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, okay, last time I did cook something, it was macaroni and cheese, not craft, it was off brand. And my son and I were eating it. I'm like, this is disgusting. And he's like, oh, good. I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> and there, do, you, do you have a microwave? Because Bougie don't have a microwave. Do you have a microwave? Yeah. Yeah. No, our weird thing is we don't have a TV. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm anti-microwave. So, <laughs> so, uh, we make we make the best macaroni and cheese in the microwave. We put our, our, just our raw noodles, raw elbow macaroni in a cup with just enough water to cover it and then nuke it for about three minutes. And then uh, if, if the noodles are cooked, then we just add in our grated cheese and a little bit of butter and stir it up. And because it's cooked like that, it's real creamy. It makes, you can't make better macaroni and cheese than that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have a daughter that can make a mean tuna salad. I mean, that's it. I mean, you just put mayonnaise and tuna, a little bit of lettuce in it, and she's got her tuna salad. She goes, I'm never going to touch a stove. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can make spam salad. Oh, I like yeah, spam right. every now and then, but salad spam, though. No, yeah, Kate, this is something I grew up eating, and Dwayne had never had it until I made it for not that long ago. It's disgusting, but um, you, you, mash, you mash up spam, and you put in mayo and rel pickle relish, mm -hmm. and um, that there you go. That almost sounds like the way they make bologna salad down in the south. Oh, gross. I've never had bologna salad. Y'all, I don't do mayonnaise, so nothing with mayonnaise. Do you, do you eat Miracle Whip? Uh-uh. I don't like that kind of stuff. No. Oh, listen, I don't I do many it. condiments at all. Like, I like things just the way they are. Like, my cooking, I like to season everything so it doesn't need anything. Well, when you come to Utah, you're going to have to try fry sauce. Oh, oh yeah, right. no, it's got mayonnaise in it though. I think that's what Dwayne said. It had mayonnaise in it. Shh, you didn't uh, hear that. Uh oh. Because <laughs> no. they do it down here, but we didn't know it was called had a name. But people like to mix their ketchup and mayonnaise together, and then dip their French fries and stuff in it. Well, here sometimes some people do like a little bit of a bar hint of barbecuey in their fry sauce. Some will do more of a of a pickle relishy fry sauce so you know you can get fancy with it but yeah your base ingredients is mayo and ketchup and any local owned place has fry sauce do you mm -hmm. eat ranch dressing april only particular like types like when i go to a restaurant i always have to ask them to let me try their ranch because if they make it in house usually i'm okay with it because i like it made with uh, sour cream because you can take like that Hidden Valley Ranch seasoning packs that they have, and you can mix it with um, with a little bit of buttermilk and sour some uh, sour cream, and it makes a beautiful ranch dressing. <laughs> and I like that. Yeah. But there's something about mayonnaise that I just I hate. <laughs> and we eat like the Lighthouse eggs. Ranch. I do like eggs, though. Yeah. Yeah, we get the one out of the um, refrigerator section in the produce department. That's the only ranch that we eat. No, like the dip that comes refrigerated in those little containers. The, it's in jars. Um, and like I said, I think it's Lighthouse. Oh, yeah. They have one that's T. Marzetti's that's really yeah, good. Yeah, T. Marzetti's is what we have in the little mm, jar. I love that. So... But uh, uh, talking about Spam salad, my sister-in-law makes a salad out of potted meat. It's potted uh, meat nice. and mayonnaise <laughs> and dill pickle relish and onion. So basically and, the same as the Spam. Then yeah. yeah, that's just, yeah, that's poor it's, people eating right there. Yeah. So. Anyway, bologna sandwich. Now, that's, that's what we grew up with. 
I make you know, a ham salad. So, like, I grind up my ham and put mayonnaise and, and relish and stuff like that in it. But uh, uh, it don't take much of it to get tired of me to get tired of it because it gets really salty. So, oh, uh, yeah. You know, if you didn't grow up using uh, slices of bread for uh, hot dog buns, you're too fancy for me. <laughs> uh, we still use bread for hot dog buns. I rather have bread than a hot dog bun. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that too. I don't like a lot of bread. So just a slice of sandwich bread is a lot better to, than a hot dog bun to me because it's too much bread otherwise. And they're great for yeah. hamburger buns too, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, and you make your French bread out of it, and your French toast out everything, yeah. the all purpose. Mm -hmm. yeah. I honestly, a lot of times, I just, you know, when we have a cookout or something, and I cook hamburgers or hot dogs, I'll just eat them without bread. I don't really use bread a lot. Even with my kids when they were little, I would take the sandwich meat and the and a piece of cheese, and I'd roll it up and I'd give it to them, and I called it roll ups. And that's what I'd give them instead of putting it on bread. Because most of the time they'd throw the bread off or pick the edges off. And I was just like, no, <laughs> no need to waste it. My, the same sister-in-law that makes the span, the potted meat salad, she makes what she calls an un, a bunless burger. And she cooks hamburger and just scrambles it up. And then they put mayonnaise, mustard, and ketchup on it and cheese and dill pickles and tomatoes and all that and it's just scrambled up on your plate all piled up like that it's almost like a, a taco salad kind of thing without <laughs> tacos but what you call it a bunless burger i uh, do something like that it's a it's a scrambled barbecue burger is what i call it and uh we eat it on like you know the buns we'll actually need the buns for that because it's kind of like sloppy joe almost yeah so now when that we have a little convenience store and that's something that's real popular here in arkansas that your convenience stores they actually cook and have almost like a restaurant in them they'll they'll make burgers and chicken fried steak and chicken and all that and so we have one here in town called jam mart and they make the best burger in town and so i'll order mine without a bun and then i ask for grilled onions to be piled on it and then they put my mayonnaise and I just put mayonnaise and uh, uh, ketchup on it and a tomato and the grilled onions. And it's real good like that. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Now, Gian, I wanted to ask you, as I was watching you, you pull the string kind of across the beads. Is that to kind of keep it lined up for you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that way you can see you've got it. Like I'm working on the third row on this side. I'm making sure that it's even with the third row on the other side. Okay. Now you said this one here is a. Uh, did you say a trim? You don't back trim around it, or I can't remember what you said. These Something are a pair that you don't have to put edging around. Yes, edging. So, and would yeah, you call it something like this? Right. Mm -hmm. Would you call edging like kind of like a, a embroidery stitch around the edges of it? Is that what you would call it? No, let me see if I've got something here that has edging. Oh, I might have to go and go into my hang on. Let me go get something that does have edging. I love your nail color. Pretty. Pretty. I like shiny metallic colors. So everybody hanging out in the chat, what are y'all up to? Anybody crafting out there? Up here in the north, they love bread, Jude says. <laughs> what is Darlene talking about? Casey talking about you right away. I've made spam salad before too. Maybe that's what it was about. She made Mama says. <sighs> no, are you no crafting? Cleaning your workspace. So mm -hmm. crocheting. Well, that right there's an edging. Okay, let me see. That's the peacock edging that's going on. Okay, I see. It's a it's a bead it's a bead design along the edge. I got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's neat. I like the way it gives it that texture too. 
my sister-in-law made these. They were the first ones I grabbed. So, <laughs> but yeah, we we sit here and we we have our days when we bead together. So that's nice. Kind of like, kind of like me and April. I told April that we were little old men. You know, <laughs> little old men go to the park and they sit on the big bench and they just sit there and never <laughs> say a word. Everyone can watch somebody else say something. So. Uh. That is I a know. little old man who's sitting there playing chess in the park. I've seen the that. Even that we're <laughs> not saying a word. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably over there calling me a liar. So. <laughs> Lynn, I like to crochet, but I only like to crochet when it's like January and February and it's nice and cold in Arkansas. I can't stand to touch the yarn when it's hot. So that makes sense. Uh, my daughter, she's since it's getting to be cold weather, then she's attempting at knitting hats again. That's her winter hobby. Mm. And I, she's like finished one. Is it like toboggans with the little ball on top kind of thing? Or yeah, yeah. She's attempted many, but finished one. Mm-hmm. And I grasp the idea of knitting and crocheting, but I can't do it for nothing. I don't know how my mom did. She used to, when I was younger, she would crochet my Barbie doll clothes. She would make like special little Barbie doll clothes. Oh, fun. That's awesome. And my grandma, she did amazing work. Um, looking around my room to see if there's some oh, quick grab to show you. But um, yeah, she was very good at both uh, crocheting and sewing. My last name is Stitcher. You'd think I'd know better about how to stitch and do stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> I have minimal skills, but I'm trying to teach myself more. I have a nice sewing machine and everything. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you knew how to sew. I can do, you know, you know, basic little mending and stuff like that. But I'm, um, like I said, I had bought like the teddy bear, um, uh, what you call it, pattern, for me to do some some of my own teddy bears and make those. So I've got to teach myself how to do that. But I figure, you know, once I'm out on the road and I've got a lot of time on my hands by myself, you know, when I'm stopped and parked somewhere, I can sit down, pull out my sewing machine, and and learn yeah there you go i know the basics of sewing i can um sew on a craft level i consider it i i can make a christmas stocking mm -hmm. and uh, but that's about it <laughs> my, mom, <laughs> my mom taught me and then you know i took sewing in school back in the day when they used to teach that kind of stuff back in the day yeah, that was Did the, the schools uh, there not have home ec anymore. Not really. No, uh, my daughter did take a foods class and the teacher told her that she knew more than any other kid in the class. And she was like, really? Because, <laughs> again, I know how to cook. I just don't. My, my mother taught me all that. Right, right. If you got a man that likes to cook and he cooks good, why not just let him do it? <laughs> Maybe we'd both be a lot thinner if the, the cooking was up to me because we'd just live <laughs> off of pot snacks, <laughs> <laughs> crackers, and salami and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and when we were talking about condiments earlier, cheese is my condiment. I put cheese on everything. <laughs> Are you a cheddar cheeser? -er? I am. I put cheese on anything it goes with. And maybe sometimes I, things it doesn't. <laughs> I like cheese, but I um like I really like it, but in moderation. I'm not an over cheeser. Mm -hmm. And um I'll go for sour cream on my tacos <laughs> or whatever before or in my chili before I do cheese. I'm not sure why. But um, probably my favorite is I love goat cheese. Oh, so that's one of the ones that I don't. I like a lot of different types of cheeses, but goat cheese is 
so wild tasting it. Yeah, I love uh, the artisan goat cheese with the different flavors. I love that. It's pungent. Like when Another you go to the one. farmer's market. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm making the backing. I'm doing the backing, cutting mm -hmm. the backing out so that way it'll look good. So it'll have a double layer of that on the back. Yeah. Oh, good. Dwayne got the garbage can out just in time. Here comes the garbage truck. Yeah, we our trash comes today, too, and we had to have it out earlier because it's already run. Well, I thought we missed it, but that was the recycling, unfortunately. You have to wait for two weeks for that, but at least we got the trash out. So if you can hear it, driving past. Thank you, son. So, My son got me a fresh cup of coffee. <laughs> now Whoa. that is love. Nothing tells someone that you love them more than bringing them coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Starbucks frozen coffee. I love that. <laughs> I'll be right back, y'all. Okay. So I'm guessing that the lighter has something to do with why, what you're doing right now. I don't remember. Did you see that she was singeing the ends of her thread? Oh, was that what she did with it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I totally missed that. And it's really, really good because especially with the nylon thread, like the Nymo thread, I mean, it just, it burns down on there and it sticks and it makes it that not extra sturdy. Don't you do that, Cindy, with some of your beadwork when we were talking, you were talking about. I Yeah, I singe like. I singed some of my uh, uh, edges. Yeah, I have I have a cigarette lighter stuck in my in my pencil cup. So, yeah. Because yeah, I remember I was asking you what you used to do it, thinking you know you had some kind of fancy device, and you showed me your lighter. <laughs> <laughs> that is as fancy as you can get. <laughs> you know, so I have found so often in life, the simplest tool the simplest method you know is usually the best it is and we like to overcomplicate things yep Let's see if these old eyes will get that needle threaded one more time here listen i've been playing with threading oh. the needle over here and Finally, I just had to lay it against my finger so I could see the my flesh through the needle hole. <laughs> Myra, yes, I'm making a pair of earrings. And these earrings I'm going to be doing as a giveaway after the show. Thank, Thank you, you, Lynn. <laughs> Hi, Myra. Is this somebody you know, Gianna? Who, Myra? Uh-huh. Mm, I've seen her around. <laughs> I haven't ever seen her around, so I didn't know. Because um, she says they match her moccasins. So. <laughs> oh, let's see. I see that Darlene said something about if something doesn't taste good. I just went over to the YouTube. So this was a little bit ago that maybe you wouldn't tell me right away. Was that, um, it was Darlene saying about Dwayne, if, if I was to cook? Yeah, it was something about your food not tasting good, Dwayne would tell you right away. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. If something oh, doesn't Marla taste good, good, he doesn't play. Okay. Dwayne's yeah. already saying, just send them to me. I've already won them. And I told him to have. <laughs> and Shush it up, Dwayne. Well, he's going to have to model them then. Yes, he's going to have to wear them. I wonder if Adam got his his beaded bolo. He was the winner of my beaded bolo tie. So, uh, do why you didn't like jewelry? Why are you wanting to win her earrings if you don't like jewelry? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mama says, but he'll send them to me. <laughs> I bet he would. Yep, I bet he would. Oh. Well, anyway. These earrings aren't very big, as you can see. Like my thumb can goes all the way down to where the the V part is in there. 
So they're not very big. They're probably about maybe an inch and a half long. Well, I mean, yeah, long and probably a same wide. For the love of Cindy, I just like winning. So Dwayne is a closet jewelry lover. <laughs> so, hi, Lori. He is. I think he's a closet jewelry lover. Hi, Lori. He is because if you get him off to himself and you start talking about jewelry, he he has interest in it, whether he wants to admit that or not. So, something if you've observed about Dwayne, he simply just has to be in the vicinity of something to learn about it because his ability to take in information and retain it is freaky. And so even if he doesn't appreciate something, he still remembers anything you teach him. Mm -hmm. This is why you have to be careful what you say around the one. <laughs> <laughs> He's a sponge. There we go. That was Dwayne. Got out that little hammer. <laughs> oh, that was the big one. The big one. <laughs> that was the this big was one. Bell. Because yeah, I was teasing him about the, because I had noticed that when people are talking jewelry, he knows plenty about it. I'm like, everyone's going to think you like it because you know so much about it. But then again, he can tell you all about clothing brands and he couldn't come up with an outfit to save his life. So <laughs> but you, tell, you tell him a brand, he'll even tell you where it's manufactured. That's just yep. part of being a man about not matching your clothes right. <laughs> Well, him selling clothing, I'm sure, is how he learned a lot about that kind of thing. Yes. Yep. That's exactly it. And see, I, this is what just baffles me. Why would you like to sell clothing when and not like jewelry? <laughs> he doesn't like to sell clothing. He just, um, that was his start because you, there's, it's, it's hard to find cool stuff in Utah. And so clothing, you know, is an easy one, but he put I would think all you could find in clothing would be homeschool mom clothes. <laughs> and uh, um so he just put his all these clothes on sale though because he wants to get rid of them. I hate to sell clothes. I'd rather be beat than sell clothes. He, oh yeah. Well the way I look at it is um unless you find a really high end men's shirt, for example, that has good resale value. It is a very expensive thing to sell because um, of the time involved in, you know, in inspecting it and steaming it, photographing, folding. Sometimes you have to wash it. Oh, yeah, yeah, measuring it. Yep, if you have to wash it. It is very time consuming. And if you think about, you know, um, time versus money, it's unless you find really good stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm getting out of the clothing as well since I can't carry that that you know amount of stuff like bigger items anymore with me once I'm out on the road. So I'm I put my uh, Etsy shop on seventy percent off on all the clothing that I have. But um over the time you know I've collected a lot of vintage items and beautiful coats made of leather and things like that. But I had to always as I'm looking for it pay a lot of attention to you know, the stitching on it, making sure that's not loose. Because if you have to pay somebody to repair that, that's really expensive. Oh, yeah. And anything that might have to be dry cleaned. I mean, if you invest that much money into it, then your profit margin goes way down. Absolutely. Like I said, I high-end jeans and high-end dress shirts really, I think, is the only thing. Yeah. Stick with, like, your basic um, everyday kind of wear, and then you don't you can easily launder that in your washer and dryer. Well, and jeans are so much easier than shirts. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I had to buy a steamer and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we've got a steamer and the folding. I had to buy a rack. Fingers. Yep. Use a whole closet and then a, a rolling rack. <laughs> so yeah. And then yeah. you have to have a mannequin to put it on. So uh, When we started, you know, we've shared the story of how we were um living in the trailer 
and uh, the bathtub being a trailer then um, the t bathtubs are fiberglass and the one in the ba master bath um, it cracked to where if you showered in it the water would be running below the trailer and mm -hmm. so Dwayne put a heavy duty shower curtain up and started hanging clothes <laughs> in the shower <laughs> and because you know it have limited space and so um our youngest son he called it the chinese sweatshop <laughs> <laughs> if i had thought about it before instead of buying that rack that takes up a lot of really floor space and everything in that smaller bedroom that i was using as my office you could take like a shower curtain rod or something and suspend it from the ceiling with some hooks or something to just kind of make you a place to hang your clothing. Sure. Maybe not your, maybe not your tub. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if y'all aren't using it, then whatever. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Do y'all have an option this, uh, this Saturday? Well, unfortunately, our cellar um, was in an accident. So, no, who I don't, was it supposed to be? Um, Dwayne will tell us. It was somebody new. Okay. Um, so, oh I think God. they're going to be otherwise occupied with, you know, recovery. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so that was very sad to hear, you know, that that happened. Right. Right. Are you sure so y'all won't have anybody that, you know, you'll bump up and fill in the slot or anything? I'm not sure what he's going to do. So Dwayne's saying PG. I don't know what PG means. <laughs> um, Got to keep our show PG? No, no. I the, the <laughs> seller. Um, yeah, hey, I have not said anything off color this whole for, for an hour and a half almost, I have not said anything inappropriate. You know that's a lot. Point. What's that, Cindy? I said we're going to give her a brownie point. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's guessing you know, what PG is. Procter and Gamble? <laughs> <laughs> Mama's saying uh, pregnant. <laughs> but uh, yeah like um myra said hopefully they'll have a speedy recovery yeah and so yeah i don't know if he's going to call on one of his emergency sellers or um take the night off i don't know if he's stopped to think about it yet right Hey, you have 20 watching now and 17 thumbs up. That percentage is very high. Well, good. Let's get those couple of other people to thumbs up for us. And zero thumbs down, which is much better than our auction did on Saturday. Oh, you, know what? you know what? I always tell people, it's okay if you give me a thumbs down. That tells YouTube you were actually there. So yeah. I got a good hit out of that. <laughs> Right. Patricia Grant. I always say you're not doing you're you know you're doing something right when you start getting thumbs down. Right. <laughs> I always keep two different two pairs of scissors with me whenever I'm I'm doing my beadwork because I'll misplace one and I'll just immediately grab the other one. I don't mm -hmm. know if anybody else does that, keeps two pairs of scissors around. I do because, well, I have multiple pairs of scissors. There's one that's in the kitchen that's for cutting kitchen items. Then I have a pair that's for cutting tape so that the sticky stuff doesn't get on the ones that I use for, you know, other things like with my clothing or something like that. Yeah, you I've know? got different, different scissors for different types, but these are my cloth and thread scissors. These are supposed to be my thread scissors. I actually got these from um, the hospital in Toila. <laughs> All right. I, I we have to those little scissors like that. Yeah, we have about twenty pairs of scissors, and I couldn't tell you where a single pair is. 
I bet the kids would know where they're at. <laughs> I, some, I, I think they're in my window seal for some reason. Um, I still will put my sewing scissors up. And uh, ah, we got John. Um, yeah, Never John more. Johnson. He's a, he is one of our best standby guys. Yeah. So yeah, and we have a lot of fun with him. But um, you know, I totally grew up in the home of you know you've seen the memes of um, when your mom here here's a pair of scissors being used, <laughs> and <laughs> which ones are you using? That was totally my house growing up. That was mine too. Yeah. My mother used to have one of those old pinking shears. I don't know if anybody oh, yes. those. Oh my goodness. And my sister decided she was gonna cut her bangs with them. Oh, and I've God. never seen my mother come running out of the kitchen so fast because those pinking shears have a certain sound. Yes. Were they oh, the metal ones too before they started doing plastic handles? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I can I can hear them. I can see them. I can even feel them in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> she <laughs> she cut her bangs right up to um right up to the line of her forehead, and oh. she had a spiky looking face. <laughs> <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> I bet your mother was really upset. Oh yeah, she was mad. <laughs> She was you like, know, you're supposed to watch your sister. <laughs> what my niece did with her oldest daughter when she cut her bangs, she told her, because she wanted to take a picture of it to send to to her sister, you know, um, my other niece. And, uh, and her daughter was upset. She's like, if you let me take a picture to send to your aunt, you won't uh, be grounded for as long. <laughs> Because <laughs> in, in being sisters, it's you know they just um, just the two of them, no brothers, and so um, then they are uh, you know always sharing with their parenting and <laughs> so. But. I mean, the things that we end up getting in trouble for when we're the oldest. I mean, <laughs> I know. Like, I was oh. There's nothing wrong with being the youngest man. I'm a youngest child, and that was by far the best spot to be in. <laughs> <laughs> the things that I got away with just simply because my mother was tired. Yeah, my my brother did that. He got away with everything, and it was always my fault. Yeah, yeah. my me too. It was my fault. Anything that my sister did, it was my fault because I should have known better to watch him. I mean, I watched them or she assumed that I showed him how to do it. Yep, that was the other one. <laughs> uh, what, um, my youngest, he definitely got away with the most, that's for sure. I know my youngest did. Yep. Well, a big part of it is you simply learn to not make a big deal out of things. Right. right. And um, something, this is totally, this uh, story from my childhood that um, it's kind of funny, but in a way it was, it's kind of significant to me. It's hard to explain why. Um, my brother's three years older than me and I was four. It was the, before I started kindergarten and my brother and his friends never, they didn't wear shirts all summer long. So I decided I didn't have to wear a shirt either. And had I been my mom's, you know, one of my older sisters, there's no way my mother would have let me get away with it. But that one last moment of freedom to be myself before I started kindergarten, I I appreciate that my mother let me do that. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, it sounds kind of odd, but, but you, you think of how you start conforming as soon as you start kindergarten. And that was my, my one last thing was running around. And there's pictures of me from that summer and I am completely tan, standing there without a shirt on. Can't even, you know. <laughs> you wore that away and she was already topless before you met her. <laughs> <laughs> we have bunches of pictures when we were kids of a of us just in our underwear no yeah. shorts no britches no nothing just in, and and i'm talking <laughs> when we were four and five years old 
Um, okay. yeah, we well, ran around in our time, funny. guys. You know, we, you know, nobody worried about the pedophiles and all that stuff. Exactly. <laughs> and we were always so far out in the country. Yeah, I've got many a pictures of me and nothing but a pair of panties just running around. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so, crazy! Times it gets, a little, it gets a little weird when you're 40 and you take pictures like that. So, I <laughs> 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 haven't gotten senile yet, so I haven't done that. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Oh, oh, you see what Borderline's saying? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, oh, Borderline, one of our uh, favorite, uh, which is Kimmy. Um, I'm like, I know who that is. Um, <laughs> we have a picture of our daughter who, um, <laughs> no pictures of Dwayne and Panties, of our daughter. She was two, and she had gotten out to the backyard. She was completely naked, and she was spying on the neighbors looking through the fence. Uh, and so Dwayne took a picture of her little bare backside, and it's one of our most favorite pictures. <laughs> <laughs> of course, she doesn't appreciate it, but we always laugh when it, you know, surfaces. I once upon a time I kept scrapbooks, you know, all that kind of fell away. <laughs> I, have, I have some pages; they're not in a book, though. <laughs> you know, but it's sad because we've got a generation right now that. They're not going to have no pictures to yeah, show their kids. Yeah, my all of a sudden he has a whole box of his own pictures, um, you know, to himself of his baby pictures. My youngest son, it's like a stack that big. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I didn't even know what I looked like as a kid till an old neighbor sent us some pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have all our pictures saved online and stuff these days. That's Mostly everything I take of my kids gets saved to my Facebook page now. So my youngest, yeah, there's not as many photos of him, like physical photos. Think about it. Will will Facebook still be around when your kids are adults? I don't know. I need to like take them and transfer them to something that I can have them printed out eventually. You need to put them in a suitcase and keep them under the bed, not your kids. <laughs> Yeah. No, your kids, the pictures, okay? Right. Don't, don't put your kids under the bed. Right now, I'm in this position where I'm downsizing to a small space, and I have, you know, those little wagons that you can buy that pop up, and you know, you can take them with you for camping or to the beach to put stuff in and pull them. Oh, I have yeah. one of those sitting in my garage right now full of picture albums that were my grandmother's albums, my mom's albums, and some of mine that I created when the kids were younger. I don't know what I'm going to do with all those things. And my brother's not responsible enough for me to like leave them with him. So I don't know. I don't, I we can't. We got it. that one that's not responsible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he would, he probably wouldn't uh, keep good care of them. He'd leave them somewhere when he moves or something. So that's the thing, though. I just need to, you know, you don't want to get rid of that stuff. I mean, it's important to me. I just don't know if there's a way I can scan those things in and put them all on a file somewhere and keep them. Keep them in a cloud. Yeah. That keep them on a good. jump drive or something. Yeah, so I need to do that. I have a bunch of pictures on thumb drives. And when my dad died, I was digging out thumb drives, pulling up pictures. So, mm -hmm. anyway. That is great. Um, oh, seeing pictures of my grandma and her siblings during the Depression. And, you know, they made it through just fine. Everybody lived to be old. And so looking at those pictures are hilarious. Mm-hmm. I love the old pictures of my grandmother and my grandfather when they were dating and getting married and stuff like Absolutely. That. Did y'all see, I've posted on Facebook, I think I posted a picture of it on Facebook, uh, that I had found, uh, well, actually my mom found it, a uh, the actual marriage license of my, my, grand, my grandpa's parents. And it's from 19... Um, 13 or 1915 I can't remember so my granddad was born in 1917 
So okay. I have a marriage license now. So there goes Dwayne. <laughs> Hands are done. Awesome. Let's pull it up so everybody can see the finished product. And so when you were making the little loops up at the top, that was to attach the things to. Were you going through like the back of the backing that you just added on to do that? I went through both the things? front, the top, the front one and the back one. I went through both. Mm -hmm. And in, in, in all, I went through it three times. First, first string was when I strung it on. Then when I attached it to the other side, I pulled it, pulled my thread from the front to the back, going back. Then when I, I, I went back up through the thread over to the other side, back through the back and then all the way around. And so I went through three times to make sure that that'd be Those steady. Are so pretty. I love it. Yep. Now to give them away. All right. Yeah. If anybody's still there, we got 14 here with us. She's going to do a giveaway for those earrings. So how do you want to do it, Gianna? You want to okay. do a, How many people do we have again? We've got 15 right now. 15? All right. Um, I want Cindy to pick a number between 1 and 30. And everybody gets to pick just one number. And... And um, April can hit the start when she's Okay, ready. so you want to do it 1 through 30. 1 through 30. We got 15 people, so 1 through 30. Cindy can pick the number. Okay, I got it wrote down. Okay. Now hit start for us. And here comes the numbers. <laughs> and after we draw this, I, I'm going to show just a few of the things that I ordered. Like I said, some tools and things that if anybody's interested in, you know, kind of what I've been looking at and what I needed to, I felt like I needed for some of these uh, types of jewelry making. Now you just started making those. Those are the ones you were calling cabochons or... Both these caps, yeah, the epoxy there you caps. Go, I love this one, how I did it. I have the feather just starting right here and going all the way around and ending right there. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I love the little fairy. She's pretty. Let's see what we got going. All right. Does that everybody have their number in? Because I'm going to. Oh, I don't think so. Uh -huh. That's only seven. Mine ended on one, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six, seven numbers. I only see seven numbers. So, did Heather put her number in? Oh, I didn't be. Um, mine, my, my uh, YouTube have shut down on me, but I, I got it back up now. So, um, I'll just a second then, because I had forgot to put a number in too. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't check to see. <laughs> Come on, I need six more numbers. Well, actually, five more numbers. Anybody else? If not, and you're just lurking, we're about to call stop. Those are sweet. And stop. All right. So, what number do you have, Cindy? Let me pull you up so we can see. What number? No, you did not win. No, you did not win, Dwayne. <laughs> <laughs> 23. Let's see. Kimmy won. Like, yep, Kimmy was right there at 22. All Very right. Okay. And Perlini and Lindsay that way she over there cussing because she picked 22 right after <laughs> Kimmy did. So she's over there like, ah. okay, Kimmy, oh, uh, send me your your mailing address so that way I can and your email so that way when I send it out you get a tracking number as well. I wasn't shushing you. I was shushing the dog. <laughs> <laughs> so. I gotta tell you about what Twain and I are doing tonight. Um, okay. My, you you to tell us that. <laughs> my brother works at. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, from my laptop at the Road Home, which is um, Salt Lake's homeless shelter, 
and we're going to uh, their annual chili affair where local mm -hmm. restaurants donate chili and uh, you vote um, and it's a lot of fun. So that's what we're doing. That sounds yummy. That does sound It is. So if anybody's interested, uh, one of the things I felt like would be real useful for um, especially working with wire or even when you're reselling vintage jewelry is a Dremel and this is called a Dremel Micro. Very light, easy to use, cordless, and it had it came with a lot of the attachments that you need. Um, this pad that I have on it currently, that's good for like buffing your silver, getting the scratches out of things, taking the tarnish off of things. You've got attachments that will drill holes into metal, you know, for you to hang it as a pendant or an earring. Um, there's also some sanding type tools, you know, like when you work with wire at the ends, you want to you want to soften those ends up so they're not going to scratch you or something like that, especially like I've been trying to make my own ear hooks. So, and I did get some more wire in different gauges. In. I got a looper tool, looper pliers. So these make three different size loops on those. Those are real useful. That's awesome. Those are very useful. And this is the crimping tool for the crimping, like for the, when I bead the, on the wires and I have to crimp off the ends. That's what those are for. And all of these I've purchased off of Amazon. I found the best deals over there on Amazon. And then I Kathleen is asking you, um, April, do you like the clasp on your necklace? I do like that. I do like that. It's a lobster claw and it has a little bit of an adjuster there. So if I wanted to adjust it out, I do. It's very comfortable. I've had it on this whole time and I really like it. Lays nicely. Beautiful. Hey, Angie. And then one of the other things that just came in is my steel block for when I'm hammering. So I hammer on this surface. So I got that. Heather needs to order one of those. <laughs> What am I hammering? Nah, you can just throw it at Dwayne. Just skip a step or two. <laughs> oh, boy. Jewel School had a wire wrap heart ring today. I'll go check that out, Lynn. Yeah, I watch um, Jewel School. I love learning from that channel over there. It's really cool. And uh, next week, instead of having on a guest, it's going to be our craft auction. Me and Cindy are going to do a craft auction. So if you're getting into crafting or you already do and you need some supplies, we can have beads and all kinds of things. And I have two of these that will be in the sale um, that come with two different types of pliers there and all the beads and components that you need to make jewelry. So I've got two of those that will be in the auction in the sale and then of course i'll have beads and other stuff i've got some yarn that's going to be in there what do you have that's going to be in the sale cindy oh uh, let me show you something really cute that's going to be in that uh uh i have these uh little uh snowman uh, those are cute they're panels fabric panels there's three of them so you oh, can do those are cute so you can make place mats or you could um make little pillow throw pillows out of them or, yeah, or a centerpiece for your table you mm -hmm. got the uh, uh uh mitten trim so and uh and i'll probably have a few more pieces of fabric that is christmas themed and uh then i'll have some beads and some stuff we'll just see what all I got to work on that tonight and tomorrow so that it'll all be ready when I get home. So anyway, so that I don't have a bunch to do when I get home. So anyhow. Ready to need you to be loud. <laughs> <laughs> he was starting to bark. <laughs> well, Wayne had sent me a bunch of these little, um, I think that's galvanized steel, little cutouts and stuff. Oh, those and are then, cute. So you got different shapes of those and then some of them are in the rusted color so they're made to look more you know they're called rusty oh made to look rusty so those are angels those and are angels. Angels. do you have provo craft clear out no, no man 
So there's a bunch of these that'll be in there. What was that you said, Heather? Oh, I was wondering if Provo Craft sells clear to the south or if it's more, if it's just around here. I think it's just more there. I yeah, have, this is the first time I've seen it. Provo I mean, just, Howie just barely got their first Hobby Lobby. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Provo is actually just a couple towns away from us. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know how far out they distribute. Yeah, I, and I'm sure yeah. you know where, if, if you guys know where I live over here in Wendover, I have nothing. So you guys are all lucky. <laughs> do you, do you want to know what I've always said about Wendover? Yeah, I, there, I mean, my shopping mall consists of a hardware store and the grocery store Smith's. That's it. And, <laughs> which is the Kroger. I've always said that Wendover was the last stop before hell. But <laughs> <laughs> that, that's just my opinion of it. <laughs> How much money did you lose, Heather? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I we went to the casino. I looked around, like, wow, I have never seen this many ugly people in one place in my whole life. Okay, he said Heather is not a gambler. All right, Dwayne, how much money did you lose? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. No, we we have Provo Craft. We get Provo Craft in our stores, you know, like Michaels and stuff. I have the Cuddle Bug, which is made by Provo Craft. Okay, um, so you you do get it there. Okay. Yeah, I think I even I think even my. I'm thinking my cricket may be made by them too. The but I company's been that. around for a while. Yeah. I remember selling Provocraft brand back, back, back in the nineties. I'll have to check in the stores. Like I hadn't paid attention, so I'm not sure. Yeah, or um, check out their website. Mm -hmm. See if you can buy just directly from them. I don't know. You're a donator to to gambling establishments. Yeah, I like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the so, back of my son. <laughs> Dwayne, Dwayne, do you just go to casinos for the free food? <laughs> so. They used to have free alcohol if you're gambling. I don't know if they yes. do that still. I don't they know still, if they still do free alcohol. alcohol when gambling. Some they casinos do. still do, some don't. Yeah. So. Most of them here in Nevada still do. So. When I worked in uh, the. I worked on the boat, one of the boats in Mississippi. They had free, you got free drinks. And I was actually the uh, PBX operator. So you know how there's phones all over a casino. When you pick it up, I'm the person that answers. And so in the middle of the night and the drunks pick up the phone asking you to call them a cab. Then they decide, you sound nice. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> far, um, far away. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm actually not on the boat. Thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I wasn't. So, so did you see my thingy that I won from a, not not one that uh, Patsy Crafty sent me the little pill box. That it's is so cute. cute. Cherry Berry had it made with a froggy, cause a froggy prince, and then all of the AB rhinestones that I love so much. So. That's beautiful. And this is a peacock feather. So. You know, that really pretty. Thing. Yeah, it was real cool. I knew something was coming, but I had no clue what it was. So, anyway, I'm gonna oh, have her come on on here and show us how she does some of the crafts that she did, does. Because if you go back in one of my videos from last year around Christmas time, she made me an ugly Christmas sweater, and it was the most coolest thing ever. It had like teddy bears sticking off of it and everything. So. <laughs> These, uh, y'all remember when April had the bead sale over on, uh, um, Glam Squad? Yeah, Glam Squad. My mind went blank. <laughs> anyway, these are uh, a pair of earrings that I made out of the little glass turtles. So they're cute. I've made two pairs out of them so far. I have one turtle left. That's so super cute. They're Those cute. are the ones I think look like Mario turtles. <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, but yeah, the next time I have an actual jewelry auction, some of this stuff I've been making going in. So 
I've got a bunch of stuff. I, I usually make like three or four pieces a night. So let's sit here and make jewelry. Make jewelry. So anyway, but yeah. So it was great. I loved it, Gianna. I think I, I think I can do this. Now, now this weekend I have plans to go visit a bead store. So we'll see if I have any money left when I come back. So yeah. Oh, I'd like to see you guys do these, but like I said, I'm making the little sets. I'm making making these. I'm making these now, and I've started putting, you know, a little putting them together with small amount of beads, and I'll be cutting the banding that I showed in case you guys want to trim them with the banding or whatever. And you know, I'll do it when everybody gets theirs after they've ordered them because I'll be selling them for ten dollars a piece. At which you know, my earrings go for a lot more than that when they're all made. So you know, everybody'll get a chance to learn how to beat around them and maybe put in a design like this if you want. I could show how to do these, how to put these kind of designs in around them. But yeah, once I get them out. I'm going to be putting about 20, 20 of them together. So hopefully I can get 20 people there to come and, you know, do it with me. Um, and once they get it. Yeah, shoot me a message for sure because I'm going to get the supplies that I need. Okay. Yeah, and I will let you know what type of thread you're going to need or I'll just cut enough off from my own and send it in there too. So, and a needle, if you guys will need a needle. So, just remember, anytime you have seed beads, um, these were, I forgot to tell you what I used, were size 11 Miyuki seed beads. Um, the number size 11 doesn't mean the big size of the bead or whatever. It's the size of the hole. That's what nice. it is. What does Miyuki mean? I need to know a little bit about like seed beads. I don't know really much about them. It's basically um, like... Does it I mean the I shape or... It's a brand, basically, a, a brand. size or a brand, a brand, I believe it is, um, because you've got the Delica and you've got Delica, a Miyuki who does does Delica Miyuki's. Then you've got the Toho. Toho are basically Japanese brand beads. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, They're always like made out of glass or something like that. Made out of glass, yes. And I do have some actual seed beads that are made from actual beads. And they are beautiful. They're very gorgeous. I don't have them up here in this container. I have them in the back back there. But I'll pull those out and let you guys see those on my on my site as well. On my channel as well. But I also do, I did start a Facebook page. It's called uh, Gianna's Beadwork and 925 Finds. I think I sent just about everybody an invite to it. It's brand new. I started it about a week ago. So <laughs> if you guys want to look that up. I yeah, I'm going to make sure I joined it. I'll be posting what I have for sale on it too. And, you know, that way you guys don't have to wait for me to come on, you know, on Fridays to say, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I got for sale. You'll immediately see it on my Facebook. So. Awesome. All right. Well, did anybody have anything else they wanted to share before we go? How do you tell seed beads are vintage? Okay. Um, the way you can tell seed beads are vintage, I believe I've got some over here that are vintage. Um, they're, they end up, they're not as bright and brilliant as they normally are. They end up kind of a mock, mock color. And these are vintage. I mean, and you'll be able to see it. These are vintage beads. Let me get that camera down there so you can actually see. I don't know. Can you see that? See how shiny these yellow beads are because they're not exactly a vintage. They These end up losing its luster and its shine. A lot of times vintage beads do lose their luster and shine. They basically end up looking like a mock. That's how you can tell they're vintage. And also, if you're looking up the color, um, you'll see that they no longer make that color anymore. <clears throat> I just put your link to your Facebook page in the chat. So that way, oh. if anything hasn't joined. All right. Thank you.
Are we still there? Yeah, I'm we're still there. We're, we're still, still here. here. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I stepped. Away. I went over to Facebook to get her link. Did she already show the vintage ones? <laughs> yeah, Hello? the beads, the vintage beads. Yeah, I showed the vintage. Okay. Beads. All right, then. Well, if that is everything and no other questions in the chat, then we will say goodbye to everybody. I appreciate you being here. And again, check out everybody's channel. And we'll see you next week for a craft auction. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.